Okay. Uh, Mairead and I are having such good fun. We're, we're halfway through uh, uh, all this good talk, and we haven't even recorded yet. This is Lou Martin. I have Awakened Spirits on YouTube, uh, my YouTube channel. This is my, my new friend and uh, sister-in-arms, Mairead Gilmartin. And Hello, she everyone. is Yes, Mairead, t take it away, my friend. Yes, t say hi to the folks and, and pick up where you left off. Hello, know. everyone. I hope you're all really, really great. Um, we forgot to record. We were in a deep conversation about um, all things <laughs> spiritual and uh and life in general and how i guess we don't um well i don't and i know lou doesn't either there's no sugar coating any of the work that i do or experience and i'm very much um share my experiences in shadow aspects of our journey just as much as the light aspects um and maybe the last several months especially for me if not the last 18 months um, deep, deep uh, dismantling, dissolving of the ego, which has been exceptionally challenging for me, but also there is jewels and lessons and rewards in that. Um, I'm kind of talking. Yeah. Just you're doing great. I, I don't mean to keep interrupting you. I, I love what you're saying. Can you just describe uh, to people who are meeting you for the first time? what you do and this kind of thing, who you are as Okay, as as yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I yeah, live yeah. in Sligo in the northwest of Ireland. Um, I have been working. It's kind of hard to put words behind the work that I do because it constantly shifts and changes. Um, but I work, I guess, as a channel. Um, I've done my own deep and still am very much in my own deep inner work. Um, it was my own, I guess, midlife crisis or dark night of the soul that led me back to this journey um in my 20s i did study like reflexology i worked as a reiki therapist um i then went down the road as a children's drama teacher which we didn't share lou for i oh, trained, in, yeah, trained in performing arts i worked as a children's drama teacher for 15 years wow. and then life being very challenging um <laughs> after the death of my father I lost both my parents quite young I led me on a journey back into this work and questioning life and what am I doing here and what is the story? And that led me on a, a deep path where I guess I was ready to open up to my soul gifts and my soul purpose. Uh, led me down a journey of light language, activating light language, speaking light language, sharing light language, uh, opened up intuitive gifts, gifts around card readings, reading um, oracle cards, tarot cards, um and that just kind of a step by step process where i've always been able to read energy um when i was a very young child i have memories of um seeing people's auras uh, i remember going to mass being a catholic upbringing going to mass every sunday and sitting up top on this like balcony where the the choir used to go and looking down it was a small church looking down over the congregation and seeing all these lights around their heads and remember thinking oh that's because okay. when we're praying we have lights around our heads and i remember saying it to my mum one day about you know the people at different shaped lights and some work this side and and my mom's saying, no, you don't see people's lights around your head. I, like, I do. And she was like, no. And that kind of <laughs> shut that part of me down. Uh, I remember my early 20s when I started back meditating, studying Reiki. That came on board very, very fast. Um, and it scared the absolute shit out of me at the time. And right. I closed that down again. Um, I still Bless actually... You. Yeah, that, that that like it was it was so visual, like I couldn't turn it off. It was like as as looking at you, the lights were around you, like that visual. Um, yeah. like I could see, like now I know it was like I could see these like shimmering cloths around people, which was their mental energy bodies. Uh, it was a lot of stuff like that that just came on too fast. So this time I was ready, I guess, for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. The dismantling, the dissolving of the ego as well, bringing everything through the heart of me helped me understand more about what I was dealing with. And um, at the end of the day, my work, I feel, is it's all energy. I see and sense and feel vibration. 
um, yeah. whether it's in the world outside or whether it's within myself or reading for a person, it's a vibrational field. So I'm shown, you know, mentioning drama teaching. This is how my guides relay information to me. Is right. um, I'm, I'm looking at like a switchboard and I don't know, you probably know, Lou, with your music and that you've got your switchboard. And for me, for the lights up on a stage, you go up the way for downstage, go down the way. This is right. how my guides have shown me I read vibration. Are right. this person up on the light or have they moved down into the dark and they're in the density and the shadow and all of the aspects of that also? So that then kind of alleviated a lot of fear around what I was dealing with and the energy and helped explain it to me in very simple terms. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Does that explain yeah. a little bit? <laughs> yeah. No, that's I mean, you. May, I may not let you leave today. This oh. is just such <laughs> I'm getting quite. Uh, I'm getting to know you first of all, which is a delight and a joy. I mean, Maraid and I were saying earlier that we connected. Uh, I, I connected with her through uh, our friends Teresa Lutnature and Zahara Celestial, who did a workshop in Wales and Ireland, uh, including at, uh, at Maraid's house up in Sligo. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, can you say a little bit about Sligo and uh, oh, the spiritual yeah. energy? Yeah, Sligo is. It is incredible. Like, you know, I, I am at stages sometimes, like, you know, we just mentioned to Lou, just back from traveling and uh, every time I come back, I you know, don't want to talk about that. Yeah, I was in South, South America, but I came back and, you know, it's cold here. It is cold. It rains a lot. Like, the, you know, the weather, I am I love the sun. And sometimes I question, like, why am I here? Why in Ireland? And the energy is, you know, at times heavy. We have a very... Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the one thing I do know is, uh, which I, I am blessed, I know a lot about Ireland and I know a lot about yeah. the energy here. And I have a lot of experience with the Fae in Ireland as well. Right. I have very, like, very yeah. strange experiences that I remember as a child with fairies. And there's there's yeah. a lot. I was always told I was away with the fairies, like since I was a young age. So <laughs> now it's a compliment. It's a compliment <laughs> it wasn't yeah, meant like that when I was growing up, you know. Right. Right. Um, but we have Love like, it. yeah, we I have lots of books here around, you know, like the obviously the, you know, we've got our incredible megalithic history here um, sure. of whether, sure. you know, whether with, you know, we've learned growing up through history books of, of the historian um, background around it and what they do know. And, you know, there were burial grounds and their stone circles. And I've learned that side of it. And then I've revisited a lot of these places from an energetic viewpoint. And what I'm showing is pretty incredible. Like I give you um, an example. There is one um, near us. It's in County Sligo here called Carrow Keel. Okay. Now, Sahara actually, I'm sure she would share at some stage as well. She had a massive awakening experience there many years ago. Now okay. I visited, there's there's about 12 cairns there. None of this has been excavated. Okay. So right. um, and I feel that when excavations take place as well, there's a lot more interference there. Well, that I found. So these are pure, these have not been excavated. Um now you're not meant to go into them, but sometimes you know just listen to the energy so i i had an experience i went up la maybe two three years ago i think it was the pre-covid maybe and yeah. um there was there's one that's like there's one or two that you can't go into they're they're just have fallen there's one that's incredibly intact and i don't really like um small spaces but i i, I got i was with my partner I was with my son and I was like, I'm going into it. So we brought candles. It was it was summer solstice. It was the 20th. It wasn't the 21st of June because the weather had was going to be really bad. The 20th was a beautiful day. So I went up, I brought the drum, I brought some candles, we brought some offerings, crawl down this passageway, like literally on your hands and knees. It's like going into an igloo, but it's about 20 wow. foot long. And then you come into this chamber where you can stand up. And there's You're three... very brave. You're very brave, my friend. <laughs> I don't know what yeah. there was I couldn't manage that. <laughs> rooms in this chamber. So I was guided right. to one, sat right. in it, put my back against the wall, like the 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 stone, like these are over five and a half thousand years old. Sat, sat in there, closed my eyes, and just brought through some light language and just just brought in through you know a blessing or knowledge or anything that would like to be shared yeah. with me yeah. and it was like um 
everything started spinning very, very fast. And I could feel like the ground dropping from under me. Wow. And I wow. was sitting in this portal, like, like, a, like a cosmos, in the cosmos. Yeah. Wow. And I seen this bear, like this huge bear coming down around me, but he was like a guardian. And then there was all of this fear came up in me and I was okay. shown like back in time, they would have, this wasn't, I was shown, it wasn't a burial chamber. This is, it was a chamber for initiations. Okay. And that, 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 um, that, uh, the, that passageway that I had crawled through, I was yeah. shown a huge stone placed in front of that. Okay. And I was shown that that darkness, we're just talking about this, Lou, this is bizarre. Right. Three okay. days and three nights of darkness, we were, sh I was shown. What? I'm just, what? <laughs> just mental. <laughs> and it's fair. Okay, okay. So, now, we, now we know they're, they're having a laugh. That's up really there, remarkable. Right? I'm just thinking yeah. of that. Yeah. We're talking about your eclipse for three days, three nights. And this was an initiation, a passageway through every fear and aspect within us and ancestral. Right. And then, so right. these three rooms, three people would have been, I was shown there was somebody that would attend and, and make sure everybody was okay. But this was yeah. your, an initiation. And when my yeah. partner came in, Paul and he was there with me for a bit. When we left, I was like a little bit overwhelmed. I had a really bad headache, like a really bad headache. He went to bed that evening with such a bad headache. Like there was so much energy there clearing. Right, and right. I I mentioned it. There's another lady. Um, I'm sure she won't mind me mentioning her name. I'm sure you know her, Jennifer O'Connell. Is it O'Connell? She lives oh, sure. in oh, yeah. Jennifer. Do you know Jennifer? American. Oh, yeah. Yes, uh, Jennifer O. I'm not sure it's Connell, but it's very Irish uh, surname. Yeah, I maybe I'm getting her surname wrong, but but long, she had long dark hair, long yes. dark hair, a real warrior. Oh yes, she lives in Mayo, yeah, yeah. I think. So yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. She's she one had of my put heroes. a post up around a bear, a something with right. a bear. So I messaged her about this bear, and she said that that she had an experience very similar a couple of years before with this bear, but the bear is from the cosmos and there is some um, constellation above us. Yes, yes. Uh, it's um, uh, Orin who I listen to and work with. So there's Sirius, uh, which is the dog star. There's the Pleiades, it's part of the Pleiades, I think. The okay. bear, the Big Dipper. And then the, I think the bear is actually around the Big Dipper or maybe that's another system. It, it is one of the three major, three or four major star it was, systems. It was a constellation, and this bear came down. Right. But the bear in this was the energy of protection. He was like a guardian around this. And right. when I went in, when we came back mm -hmm. down, there was one chamber at the front that is like the light box. So it's got like what New Grange has. It would light up. Okay. I went into that one on the way back, and I was getting birthing the energy from that chamber to the other one was parallels apart. That one was about embracing the shadow. This was the light and this right. was birthing. It was very feminine energy. It was like about rebirth celebration of the light. So then I was shown that each and every chamber was different initiations that yeah. our ancestors would have moved through on their own journey. It was remarkable. <laughs> Bless you. Excuse me. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Well, I'm just gobsmacked, as they say, you know, that uh, you're talking three days of uh, uh, yes. facing the dark as an initiation. That's amazing. Yeah. Just talking about that a minute ago. Yeah, well, there we're de we're definitely uh, There's living something. the news. Yeah, something's going on, as we like mm -hmm. to say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, God, Marie. Well, I mean, an earlier hunt, that was, thank you for that. Earlier, uh, you know, you were talking about getting, if I can share this, downloads of mm -hmm. different, uh, you know, star systems and, and just, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, your, 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 your visual ability, you know, and your, your receptive, uh, you know, mm -hmm. ability is absolutely extraordinary. You're mm -hmm. as gifted as anyone I've ever met in my life, for sure. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but no ego though because that's not allowed anymore so it's no good to oh, me yeah. those yeah. compliments are no good <laughs> yeah. you can but at your own at your own risk you know uh to, yeah you know don't give it to your ego is what my teacher was yeah well said. that's true that's absolutely true yeah i'm still i'm still um moving through that one well, slowly we, we but, surely, but yeah it is uh yeah it is remarkable like the last maybe three four years now 
I receive downloads at night. Yeah. So it's like, right. um, and it's obviously not every night, but I could get maybe five nights together and then there could be nothing for a while. Um, right. But it's right. like, yeah, I wish, you know, sometimes I wish I was incredible at art that I could could try and relay or draw or put something out there as to what I receive. But obviously I'm receiving it in a different way because it's coming through me for something. Uh, yeah. But it's like, um, yeah, bit like I mean billions and billions and billions of geometry and how like so say for example I was shown and, and like so this comes in like a wave and then I can bring my awareness into one part of that wave and in that one part of that wave so it's like it's like moving behind my eyes is right. like um geometry so I was shown like a say for example a, a leaf in in creation and inside that leaf how every shape and code and geometry builds that and then another thing so it's like all the building blocks and it's all geometry and color yeah. um i've sometimes experienced sound as well like celestial sounds i've experienced um like beautiful celestial sounds um sometimes yeah i've had like one stage with a star system um something else very interesting um but may not may trigger some people depending on where they are in their journey okay. uh, this was when i was moving through massive shadow work and yeah. trying to make peace with you know all of yeah. the horrendous crimes yeah. in the world and what's right yeah. what's wrong and yes. i received so receiving all this maps and all of these celestial coding and it's always been incredible and very awe-inspiring one night for maybe three nights i received these maps of war so like this, right. this codings of war right. and my first thing was oh my god i've uh, have i connected into something dark here clearing my field connecting with my higher self asking if there's anything there interfering my field to move out and i was like no you receive this so i was like oh my god i'm going to receive something that i don't want to be know about or be associated with so i let this move through me and it was like building blocks like before like i would receive star systems maps this was all blue um energetic blueprints of war and i was like, okay so i received this for three days wow. thinking what is happening here and i was shown yeah. the, so something about three here lou the third day i was shown right. This is all from source. This, what you're receiving, is from the same place and point of where you're receiving the light from because it's all one. So, yeah. big lesson, huge lesson. So, <laughs> and I was getting, you know, the yin and the yang, the light and the dark. The darkness yeah. cannot exist without the light, and vice versa. So right. for, for the human mind to perceive that and recognize, okay, how can the same point of creation create so much love and light, create so much darkness? But that's the balance. That's the how we learn, how we grow, how we move through our lessons. And yeah. that for me was remarkable because it was like, oh, it's not separate. All of it is unified. All of it is one. But it was very remarkable for me to receive that information. In my mind, it was coming from such a different space. Yeah. But it was yeah. all created. So no, everything is created perfectly, even though it may seem so horrendous and horrific. There is a purpose behind it all. That was yes. remarkable for me. Oh, that's extraordinary. I mean, I love what you're saying, my friend, because all of these things, you know, are so organically connected and you're you're being so clearly, uh, you know, inspired to share just the, the most important information for all of us, myself included. Um, you know, I mean, it's a free will universe, you know, it's a free will a world. And so if if the creator, if people are asking for plans of war the creator says you're a part of myself here's what and began. yeah we're talking about the karma so we know that there is going to be a karmic attachment to those choices if you're making that um, and you are going to have to clear that through your soul at some level um, but it is you know, <laughs> for me though it's like you know and i've met many people i've met many incredible people but i do feel at the moment there is this um it, it does trigger me at times still is this um 
Sure. Is, there's, there's a huge spiritual movement right now and there's a tend yeah. it's, uh, it's fashionable or you're you're on the bandwagon and you're seen in the right clothing the right festivals the right retreat spaces um and it's all everybody's smiling everybody's happy you know there's this kind of lifestyle choice that people are making and selling but there's yeah. a massive spiritual ego attached to that that mm -hmm. it find it very hard to resonate with um, because yeah. I feel that if you're doing your own work, you're dealing with your own shit, you're going to be completely authentic and say, look, at, yeah. I'm having a motherfucker of a few days here. <laughs> I'm not yeah. going, I'm going through the ringer here. Yeah. But if you're having this facade that everything is rosy, my life is great, there's something not aligned here. There's something oh. egotistical. So there, there's, there's a, a lot that's kind of out there right now that's showing you know it's all sunshine and roses and, and wonderful but that's not the reality of the journey it sure. is painful it is painful yeah. it is yeah. awful at times it's very yeah. very challenging at times but that's what makes it sweet and beautiful also that you're learning through that and i think the more authentic people can be about their stories about their lives about their struggles that then gives other people the permission to share that also you know yeah. not just yes. saying you know I, I went and I had you know some medicine or ayahuasca or whatever it is on your journey these these are sacred sacred medicines that have been there through centuries and centuries and they should not be exploited the way they're being exploited right now um so there's 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 a an integrity and respect and an honesty that has to start within yourself um i feel that needs to be um released within you before you move down that path so there's just i just think you know for people to be aware of that too if somebody is preaching you come to me i will give you this i'm going to make you feel this way ask maybe what's the alignment what's the resonance what's the integrity behind that person first because um i find the more i'm in this work the right. less i actually need to do for somebody what I'm asked to do is be the space, hold a space of safety for them yeah. so they can open up and recognize and realize if everything they need is within them anyway. But I'm holding yeah. a space, I'm holding a support for them, um, yeah. but I'm not getting in there, fixing it and telling them this is what you need to do, because ultimately we're the only person that knows what's best for us as well. That's right. That's well said. That's beautifully said, Marie. God bless you. Yeah, honey. I mean, it's, uh, it's, um, you know, integrity, authenticity, honesty, responsibility, humility, vulnerability, uh, you know, repeat, repeat, repeat until, you know, uh, we know the difference between our negative ego, uh, our wounded inner child, uh, our shadow, uh, you know, all these interconnected parts of us that we build uh, because we're, we're wounded and unconscious, basically, in this, in this big, wide world. And as we mature and grow and heal and receive the grace and the blessings and the and the guidance from from our source within, you know, then we we know the difference between wisdom and ignorance, you know, and we learn to to take responsibility and make wise choices and mm -hmm. forgive and be forgiven and yeah, not pretend to be something that we're not. You're you're saying it beautifully, you know. And you and I were sharing our litany of horrors over the last few years, you know, yeah. your, yours top mine, but it was a close yeah. race there for a few moments. Uh, <laughs> I was with you until the last turn, as we say, but uh, you know, as, as you're saying, and it's great to laugh about it, right? It's lovely. Uh, you know, it, it's like you and I know, okay, we are connected to spirit. There is a purpose to what's happening in our lives. We do have a role to play in terms of helping other people to heal and awaken, but yeah, we are not in charge of this movie. You know, mm -hmm. it is. It's a big thing. And I mean, you know, not, uh, we, we asked to be led, guided, used, supported, mm. you know, healed, but uh, we're not alone anyway, for sure. We know that. And uh, oh. all coming through you. What I want to come back to, just the last thing here, is that, you know, how you are uh, a, like a gatekeeper of these higher dimensions and bringing these higher dimensional energies, you know, onto the earth and through you and into the field and, and making it, you know, conscious for the rest of us like myself and you know 
you're, you know, as we move into the fifth dimension, as these things become more physical and more part of our reality, I mean, you are, you know, definitely one of the people on the planet who's helping this to happen. I, I have no doubt about that. Oh, Wow. Thank, thank you, Lou, for saying that. Um, yeah, I, it is remarkable. And, and, you know, there's, you know, we all have our own gifts, whether we're awakened to them or not, or, you know, they're coming on board for us all at our own time and our own, you know, our own contracts, you know, our own soul, soul contracts. Um, but there is, you know, many people as well. I've met people that, you know, I, I do grid work. I didn't know I done grid work. I didn't know that. And then when I look back over like periods of my life, I've ended up in places that are very, very significant and poignant that I had absolutely no intention of being there. Um, and this has happened several times for me. Um, for example, recently I just discovered I was in, um, you know, Patricia, Roy, is it Cobles? She's in uh, oh. Patricia Coda Robles. Yes, oh, you're, you're the first person to say her name before I did in the conversation in quite a while. Go on. Oh my God, she's amazing. Like you can even the celestial energy from her. Oh, she's incredible. But she had yeah. mentioned there was one thing. I, I think you share her post too, though, that she I was do. in. In the, yeah. She was in the caves in Gibraltar, uh, Archangel Michael yeah. caves in Gibraltar. Well, I was like, that, I was Lamb. in those bloody caves years ago. Right, right. right. And okay. it was completely random. I was staying on a holiday in, was it Portugal or Spain? I can't remember. And we went for a day trip and I ended up in these caves. And it was like, oh my God, the energy there was remarkable. And and she was wow. saying, I didn't know it was Archangel Michael's caves. And yeah. um, there's like, there's a few other really significant places I've ended up. Like I ended up in the mountains in Turkey in Mother Mary's house by accident. Nice. Um, that was, this was kind of the start of my um, kind of, you know, awakening uh, again, so to speak. Myself and my partner, I would have booked a holiday to Turkey. Things up, yes. We yes. went for a, a half a day trip we paid for to go to Ephesus, which is like this incredible, like seven wonder of the world. Like this, it's 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 a remarkable place. And when we're getting back on the bus to go back to our hotel, the guy said to us, uh, oh, sorry, you've booked the full day. And I was like, oh, no, we didn't book the full day. And he goes, oh, yeah, he said, your names are on the list for the full day. And I was like, well, what's the rest of the day? And he said, we're going to the Taurus Mountains um, on the top of Turkey, and we're going to visit Mother Mary's house. And at the time, Lou, I had still, like, I was before this, and I was still considering, you know, I hadn't done a right. lot of my work. I was still okay. considering Mother Mary from the Catholic aspect, not sure. the energy sure. aspect. Yes, I'm with and you. I was like to Powell, yeah, I was like to Powell, I'm not going, like it was really, really hot, like it was like 30 something degrees. And he was like, sure, we've, we've, if they're saying we pay for, we go, should we go? And I was like, right, yeah. we go. So I wasn't happy, headed right. off in the middle of nowhere. And then we got to this place. Oh my God, it was amazing. So the story was that after the crucifixion of Jesus, um, all of anybody associated, the mother, family, everybody had to be hidden out of out of Jerusalem. So she was smuggled through the border of Turkey and she lived the rest of her life on this mountain, the Taurus Mountains in Turkey. And there was this ra little round house. So that so the base of the house was still the original and then they had rebuilt it. So we were we had to cover out my shorts and t-shirt on. Sure, I'm like the Irish woman trying to get the sun. So I had to put a scarf they had to cover me up before I went in. And there were just like, so it was all this orange groves. We walked down this place of orange groves. There was water. There was like a, a, a river and a waterfall of water. The energy, because the land around it had been so dry and arid, like the energy here was like, I remember just feeling like it was like walking into a paradise. And we walked in. So they said only one person can go in at a time. So you go in this little door, you go up to the front and you go out a little side door. So I just was more concerned about wrapping myself up in these, you know, in the shroud, walked in the door and this feeling, oh, I'm getting it now, came over me like instantaneously. And I just started crying and crying and crying. Yeah. 
and yeah. I walked. It was just a little stone house. I think there was like a picture of her. I'm not sure on the wall. There was something was very, very simple and basic, but it was this energy. And just every part of me. And I remember by the time I walked out the door of the other side, I couldn't feel my legs. I couldn't feel anything. And I, I kind of put my head down and I was trying to catch my breath. And then Paul had come after me. And he is very sensitive and, and, and he was like, what, what, what was that? And I was like, did you feel that? And he was like, yes. And I was, I, I was just something, maybe that was the beginning of my activation, I don't know, because it was just, it stayed with me. It was so profound and that I was- I'm gonna feel it now. Yeah, that I was, and I've revisited Turkey several times. There's so much history there. It's a remarkable place. Um, but that was like, another one that was like absolutely incredible um but there there's many and there's there's a lot you know going back to the history of ireland as well um the knights templars sorry one second that that is one of the most incredible stories i've heard in a long 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 wow. time and i can feel the energy behind that and um i feel you know your energy and paolo and all of that and um, what it reminds me of, just very, very briefly, um, uh, let me just jump in here for one, mm -hmm. one second, kind of put an underline under that. William Friedkin, the, the film director who just passed on, did French Connection and a few other films. He was invited to go uh, to uh, see the um, Shroud of Turin in person. <sighs> yes, there you go. And when they brought it out of the box, everyone in the room burst into tears and wept uncontrollably until they, they couldn't cry any longer. And this is the force, the love force, like you described it with Yeshua mm -hmm. earlier when he showed up in, in, in your vision. You know, this is the force that we're tapping into again, opening up to again. And, you know, uh, you talked about Patricia, just here real briefly. Her latest one, I don't know if you, if you saw this, but her channeling from the Company of Heaven, mm -hmm. which are her guides, I followed her weekly for seven years now. Mm -hmm. uh, her videos, yeah. She um, she said the next step of the journey, and this relates to your your story and your your path as well. I think, right? The next step of the journey. Our senses have been so lowered since the fall from grace and the last thousands of years coming back up that we still can't even imagine mm. and, and sense. Like you're talking about sounds and music and lights and all mm -hmm. of this coming through. You're, you're, you're in that zone where we're all reaching for. So over the next, she says, the last conference in August, we're going to get all of that back from that, from that conference wow. forward. And it's also her last conference, 38th conference, the last one. Spirit says, we're done now. This is it. Wow. We've gotten you down the mountain. So I just wanted to put that into the mix here. Wow, that's incredible. That's incredible. I love, yeah, it's that, it's that, feeling that that i had that it it doesn't there's no logic there's no thought it's it it's like it rises up from within you and completely consumes you um it's like you're part of something miraculous your whole home your home because most of us are feeling we're lost we're not home um and yeah there's you know there is like we could talk forever louis there's so much <laughs> there's so much stuff i have um received that i i just don't share with many because i don't have the opportunity or there's there's many people that will be like you know you've just lost him right this is too this is too much sure. this is but there's you know there's so much i'm shown like when i when i tap into somebody's energy i read so i would have began reading you know the body the chakra systems, all stuff that we can find out about in books. Then I started tapping into their feet, so down to the earth chakra. And when I would tap into their feet, I would first, my, you know, my first steps would be, are they grounded? Maybe they're not grounded in the earth. Maybe they don't know their journey. I would connect with Archangel Uriel. She helps, you know, I see her as a feminine energy. She helps ground people, help redirect them. Then, you know, a few stages further in my journey, I started to pick up the bloodline through the earth chakra. So that person's bloodline, that person's family line, the unhealed karma, the unhealed trauma that is moving up through their body that's still there, that they're designed to clear, that would happen. 
Then I'd move up to the top of the head. We're at the crown. So, you know, the crown is your connection to the divine. Then I started to learn there's more stuff up here. There's your star gateway. There's your stellar gateway. There's your connection to source. And through that, I would pick up their soul contracts. I would pick up other stuff for their soul. The back of the causal chakra then. Oh, my God, that was something else. That's their parallel universe, their parallel lives, their past lives, which is all playing out at the one time, non-linear. We're right. trying to, you know, it's it's just, and this can be yeah. instantaneous. So when I pick this up, it's 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 there. It's instantaneous information, but my my speech, my language, feels like a Neanderthal trying to speak it because we're in such a dense energy it's so dense here that you're trying to put words onto a higher vibration that is so light so free that it's it, it's like my words are fumbling they're heavy to try and explain to somebody or relate to somebody the magnificence of what i'm seeing around them like the magnificence of these beings um well, like you the fine job as far as I'm concerned, sweetheart. <laughs> you, are, I'm just stepped off my feet over here. Are you kidding what? me? Yeah, you're you're doing a brilliant job of trying to describe and translate. You know, it what is, is difficult, but the, but the frustrating part for me too, Lou, is that I can sit with somebody and with their permission, if their higher self allows, I can bring through phenomenal information. Brilliant. I cannot do that for myself because well, I'm still having to have the human experience. <laughs> yes. Uh, you just made my day. My <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, we can, we can, yeah, we can help everyone else in the room and read everyone mm-hmm. else in the room and give them their, the missing piece. And then, you know, we, we're we completely back. blindsided. Yeah. There's a flat tire on the car. Yeah, you know, because and we're like, having to learn it just like everybody else along the way. Yes. Yes. But my friend, you know, the great gift of this is like we're doing here today, Mairead, you know, we are, I mean, I think we need each other now, community, uh, conscious community is my phrase. I think we need each other more than we've ever needed each other. And as we've said, with the three days of darkness and and this uh, synchronicity about this that keeps coming up here with us at the moment, you know, it's, um, you know, we're, we're gathering the momentum you know, to move through something, I think, really huge together, all of us, you know, whether we know each other's faces and phone numbers or not, Mm -hmm. you know, so I'm just, again, just really grateful to get to know you and and, and really understand what you bring to, uh, Mm -hmm. to this time. It's, it's, it's monumental. It's really, really incredible. Oh, thank you. That's great. That's, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, good, good. Good. I mean, so uh, uh, if I can help you in any way, my friend, it's it's my pleasure. And, you, you know, you just being you and your courage, your vulnerability, your humility, your humor, uh, you know, your goodness, beauty and truth. You're just bringing it on through. And that whole Mother Mary thing, I'm, I'm you know, still floating away with the energy of just oh, that. The, oh, it, it, yeah, that that has been very special. And the Mother Mary energy is very special to me. I've had many. I, I've had a massive, uh, I had a massive disconnection with the mother energy. Um, so I think that's been a, a passion and a possibly a huge part of my life's work. Um, sure. And I do a lot of work with women and workshops around reconnection with the mother and, and the feminine energy within us. And what I love about the Mother Mary energy when I connect with her now, um, and I've just returned from Colombia, I was in Las Lacas. I don't know if you heard of Las Lacas in Colombia, where there was a vision of Our, our Lady. Okay. Um, so there's this place I was drawn to go there, talking about, you know, ending up in different places. I was drawn to go there. I, I've always wanted to explore some of Colombia. I've always had a, a connection there. Um, now, possibly not the best time to go right now. <laughs> However, we only ended up there, myself and my partner, for two days. It wasn't very safe for tourists for, you know, I, 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 it wasn't the safest. Anyway, it was it, it was what it was. But we went to Las Lagas. So Las Lagas is, is not far from the border of Ecuador. Um, there is this place. I just was drawn to go there. I don't I still don't know why. 
There is a story in the 1700s of this indigenous woman. It's in the middle of nowhere in the in the Andes. So we cross literally we've crossed the Andes to get in there. That's and all. she was caught <laughs> in a storm. She 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 had a little daughter. She's an indigenous woman. She was her daughter was mute. She she never spoke. She right. was caught in a storm and she went into this cave. And in the cave, uh, Mother Mary appeared to her. And the daughter said, look, Mama, there's Mary. And she turned over. So the, the daughter started speaking. Now, wow. the, indigenous, the indigenous woman, she was afraid. I can't remember her name. She was afraid and she didn't want to share her experience. But when she went back to the village, everybody realized her daughter is speaking now. Right, so what right, has happened, right. so eventually she told her story. People mm -hmm. went and they started to visit this place, this cave. Now, yeah. they say, legend has it, whether this is the truth or not, they say that when they went back to the cave, there was an image of Mary, um, like, embedded or imprinted on this, on the stone. And wow. they say it's still there to the day. Now, we went to it. They have built a church around it. They have it there. Like we've seen the stone, but they've obviously painted over it with their own. So it, it, it has a very heavy Catholic feel. But you go down into this valley. I must send you pictures, Lou, of it. And there was, yeah, so there was okay. three churches built on it. So there's this huge oh, wow. bridge Jeez, and they built good. three churches on top of each other. Like it is magnificent. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I That's went it. there. I went there and I was expecting, I, I think I had some anticipation that I was guided to go there and I was expecting to get some type of uh feeling like I did in Turkey. Okay, so which was was not predetermined, of course. We just landed there. So I went there with Powell. We it was a big thing to go there. He wasn't gonna go, wasn't safe, and I was like, I'm going, we're this close, I'm going. When we got there, then I was very like, <laughs> like I'm glad I went, it was beautiful, but I didn't feel any anything so i was like okay just you know it is what it is i wasn't meant to feel anything but i was meant to go there but we were walking back up and there was these um there was this like a an, an obsidian is it called these like old um it was black obsidian yeah it wasn't obsidian it was like a you know those um they're like a Oh, what is the name of them? It was like a, a, a pillar coming up out of the ground with right, the right, And right. They're, they're ancient. You've seen them in Egypt. You see them in different places. And it had all these um, hand-carved scriptures on it. Wow. And I was walking up, like at these hills, walking up, going, why did I come? And I seen this. I was like, oh, my God, what is that? And went over to it. And the energy of it was incredible. But it, it was pre-Inca. It's a pre-Inca. Um, wow. Yeah, I, I will tell me the name of the indigenous people there, but they that area was sacred, sacred, ancient, ancient. But I right. feel like it was the area I was drawn to. Um, there was a lot of like history there, but it was the overlay of the Catholicism, the overlay of people coming in need of prayer, help me, save me, heal me. Yeah. I feel yeah. that has condensed a lot right. of the, the energy that was there. Okay. Um, but those artifacts, there was there was a lot of stuff under the ground there that was remarkable. It was right. remarkable right. there. Let me ask you, Marie, do you feel like these sacred sites are becoming more powerful, like the light oh. is turned on? Yes, Abs ab absolutely, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, I was then, we were then, <laughs> this is funny because it's actually nearly me repeating myself again now that I'm sharing this with you. We were coming okay. back through the border, we were coming back through the border and Powell's cousin Alvaro and his wife, the beautiful family, they were going to pick us up, bring us across the border through from Colombia to Ecuador. They live in this uh, small city called Tulcan. It's on the border. And okay. he was on about, we go for something to eat before we get the bus, because it was like six hour bus back to um, to Otavalo and Powell's home. 
So we were like, okay, we'll get something to eat. And then Alvaro kept talking about this cemetery. We got to go to the cemetery. We've got to go to the cemetery. And I was like, I hate cemeteries by nature. You know, I just, I just don't like them. Um, I have bad experience with my parents' graves. I just, I, I just feel they're very, very cold. And he okay. kept saying to me, we go to the cemetery. And I was like, what is about you in the cemetery? And he's like, <laughs> we just go. So all right, yeah. right, we go to the cemetery. So we go in for a few minutes. So we pulled up to this cemetery in this very center of the city in Tulkan. And we walked into this, this place. And I mean, the energy here was off the charts. So it was like, oh, oh the picture, this place was absolutely incredible. It was oh. mostly catacombs. Okay. And but they have built in it these mazes. So you go in and there's like trees everywhere. There's these mazes that go on forever. So you're just like in the light and, and the energy. And then around all the cemetery, they have like um, they have these huge trees that they have shaped like tabiri. So they're guardians, they're Inca guardians. They have shaped into the trees around the whole cemetery. It, I have never seen anything like it in my life. I was gobsmacked. Wow. wow. And we walked around there and I was like thinking, maybe this is why I meant to have come here. Because this was so off the chart, off the path as well. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I remember standing in the center of this. And Paul was saying to me, are you okay? And I just started crying. I could feel this open wow. my chest and I started crying. And he wow. was like, what's wrong? And I said to him, I never thought I would walk into a place where there's thousands of people buried around me and feel such peace and feel wow. such love and love and tranquility and like a piece of paradise we'd walked into. Wow. It was, wow. It was amazing. So things like that are you know so surprising like the the you know the human self and the ego is bringing wanting to go this way right but right your soul self is is giving you you come on listen listen yeah. we're, we're bringing you yeah. this way yeah 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 so learning to to trust that yes yes that's you know that's just so powerful so beautiful um you know uh, the um you know spirit is returning to the earth you know, here's one. Yeah, they're showing me now. So I listened to um, uh, a woman. Her name is Nancy Rebecca. And she was a nurse for years. She's like in her 60s now. And uh, she uh, is, you know, a full on light worker and going to places and all this. And she works with the blue beings of light, which I, she said, I know her. I know. Her. Yes, yes. I have something okay. very. <laughs> I'll just hand it off to you. Carry on. Do you want to say what do you want well, to say? There's something I, I don't know her personally, but I I have a very interesting uh, thing happen to me about that. She, Go on. I love Pam Gregory. Yes. And I yeah. watch Pam Gregory. Yeah. And Pam yeah. Gregory yeah. had an interview with her one day. And yes, I saw that. Was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the blue beings came up. And I was like, there's something, because I was just guy, there's something here with her. And I watched the whole, it was about an hour long, but I, her voice, yeah. everything about her was captivating how she speaks. Yeah. And she was talking about these blue beings. She was talking about these pyramids and, and, and them coming on board, the crystalline pyramids and coming on board. Right, right. I was blown away by this. Yeah. But what's do. so remarkable is sometimes when I bring through channeling, uh, bring through healing <laughs> or clearings, I don't remember what I brought through. Okay. Sure. Sure. So I don't remember. So people would message me back and say, oh, my God, that was incredible when you said this, this and this. And I'd be saying, did I say that? I don't remember. So, <laughs> so right. I watched this full video. I was blown okay. away. And I okay. went and I got like a cup of tea or something into the kitchen. And I was like, God, this is something about this. And I kept getting it. two days before that I brought through a clearing for a, a group, like a, like a channel meditation for a group. And I got so clearly listen back. This is two days before this happened. And I listened back and I was brought like it was we bring in our guides. It was brought up through the through the cosmos and we're brought to this blue light in in the cosmos. And when we got to the blue light, it was a blue pyramid. And we entered this blue pyramid and we were met with these blue beings. <laughs> and Hello. I was like, what? 
is going on here? Right. So I had already brought wow. through that information. And two days later, I seen, because obviously it was the other way around. I think, oh, that's why it was my in my subconscious mind, blah, blah, blah. These blue beings. And they were doing healing with crystalline pyramids as well. And I wow. just thought, I love when these things happen because it's sure. so remarkable. And sure. she has a post. I think it's her that put the post recently about Ireland. Did you see that? Yes, She's that's one about what Ireland. I was going to share with you. Yes, honey. Well, did you see it? Yes, I watched that last yesterday and I actually sent her a message because it was so interesting. Yeah, um, because yeah. she's talking about when she was on Ireland, she's seen an island that was floating above. That's what I was going to mention. Yes, darling, two of the Danon. Yeah, oh, two of the two. And I've worked with the energies of two of the Danon um, because I was and getting. Then, do I have that right? Am I saying that right? Yeah, two of the Danon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've it's worked. It's a higher dimensional, you know, lands above the, the, the so that yes, yeah, so the two at the Danon are the tribe. Um, they are the the people. So the names okay. of, of the warriors, the, okay. the the place there we have. You know, you've probably heard of here, Chirlin Oak, the land That's of it. eternal youth. We have different yeah. names for it. There's also an island here off the coast of Sligo, off the coast coast of the north northwest, called High Brazil. Oh. Now, it's very interesting because that could be a possibility, too, because there's lots of books wrote on this, High Brazil. There's two days of the year off the coast of Sligo. This island is meant to be seen in the sky. And it's no. meant to have moved into a higher dimension. Right. So back in the 1700s, this was actually on the maps of the coast of Ireland, in maps. And they have stories. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wait, okay, okay, just a second now. Yeah, really? Okay, yes. carry on. Yeah, so All Google right. High Brazil, okay? So, oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. so it is, it's yeah. really, there's loads of like documented, this island was for yeah. real in the 3D. Right. And right, they right. talk about some like explorers and some captain has documents in his papers about visiting this island and there being yeah. lots of magic here. And, yeah. that he, uh, and then when they went back, the island was gone. So they said that the island had ascended into a higher dimension, so it's no longer visible. Now, the right. historians will say it's covered in water, it's submerged now. But there is maps. So prior to the 1700s, before that, if you look at maps, it's on all of the maps. So it did exist. <clears throat> well, this just gets better and better, Marie. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> This is uh, this is incredible. So Tuath Tadanan is the name of the tribe. Tirnanog is the the land of eternal youth. Yes. And then you. you High Brazil is this Brazil. other dimensional island okay. that has okay. sound evidence of it being on maps. Yes. Okay. Well, here's here's the here's the next piece of the puzzle for us. So uh, Agartha, the inner earth. Yeah. So I'm, I have an interview with uh, Camilla from Sweden who's been uh, traveling in her light body to uh, to Agartha and okay. uh, Hyperborea, uh, she calls it. So I'm chatting with her on Friday. So we'll we'll see what uh, what she can add to the conversation. But I'm just saying, you know, all these lands, uh, you know, Avalon, oh, yeah. Kamala, you know, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera, all these aspects of the fifth dimension and higher, yeah. these, these yeah. seem to be starting to reach out to us now. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, it's uh, and actually in here, we don't hear about it. But in South America, because I've just returned from Ecuador is like phenomenal volcanoes. There are like there's no word. They are phenomenal. The energy, the the relationship that the people have with the land is incredible. Is incredible. Um, the energy, the, the you know, the, the celebration, they celebrate in Tire, they celebrate Pachamama, they celebrate, they they respect and revere the life that the land gives them is is very much um still intact there. Um they had like you know their history, there has been you know a heavy Spanish uh, inquisition. The, the Spanish did have a lot of suppression, but the Catholic the Catholic religion there is very much implemented, but it was not capable of suppressing their 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 country and their their um, culture like it did yeah. in Ireland. Ireland, the suppression is is immense there. 
Uh, and yeah. I feel that in the land a lot. Um, but there was amazing. But they do talking about um, inner earth. There is lots of footage from people with giants walking around the mountains there. Huge giants. And the people well, will tell you, they don't laugh at this. They don't question yeah, yeah. it. They will tell you they have come up from from yeah. inner inner their inner space to to yeah. to come out and see what's going on. Brilliant. Do you know Dranvalo Melchizedek? No. Wrote the. Uh, I'm I'm glad I can share something with you that you have. <laughs> it's a, it's a tough thing. It's a, a tough challenge. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Um, he so he is um, he's a channel for Thoth. Wow! Right? Yeah, I love exactly. Thoth. I have a lot of books about Thoth. Yeah. Yes. Well, all right. That's so he calls uh, Luke. Yeah. Sure. So his name is Dronvalo Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Yeah. And he's real simple. He, he, I'm thrilled to introduce him to you, Marie. His uh, book is The Art of the Flower of Life, um, volumes one and two, and then he has another one called. Um, Serpent of Light, uh, which is also extraordinary. But Drunvalo, uh, you know, is is the real deal, big time, like your lovely self, my friend. And he's been working with spirit uh, as a scientist and as a mystic and also traveling to all the indigenous sites on the planet. That's what Serpent of Light is about. And um, so why am I bringing him into the conversation? What were we just uh, chatting the on here? The giants. Giants. All right. Yeah. So there, thank you. Exactly. You're very good. So <laughs> Trenvalo talks, talks about how we see these statues, particularly in places like Egypt, and you see these, you know, 200 foot tall statues of uh, human beings. And Trenvalo says, those are, those are to scale. That's not an exaggeration, you know, and this is part of the, the opening of, and you know, 20 foot, 50 foot, yes. you know, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, there are, um, you know, but this seems to be particularly connected to the inner earth. Yeah. These, these, these larger beings, etc. So yeah, things are really uh, heating up at the moment. You know, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I, I love that because um, you know, talking about as well, you know, the the land and and the fairy forts and like the land. I feel in Ireland right now, in places, is alive. Is alive. Sure. You sure. feel it. It's like it's For breathing. Sure. It's alive. It's it's yeah. so incredible. Um, and you know, I I've had a few interesting things happen me. Um, I, 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 you, <laughs> in, you know, all these things happen to me in in the other realms as well. But this in right. in the physical, um, I I went on like a, a bit of a wild goose chase, which happens. I think most people, if they start to read books about the Templars and the Knights and all of that kind of thing, and yeah. I I don't know how it happened, but I came across this book. Um, there was a book I I was guided to get about the Knights Templars. And it talks about their whole history and how Portugal, the port of the Grail, was the, okay. really the breakdown of it, where the the Holy Grail was 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 originally formed and, and made, and and all of the knights around it, and it, it kind of touched a lot around Avalon, it touched a, a lot around Ireland, and then I came across another book that I had here about pagan Ireland, and there was stuff about the Knights Templars, and what was really interesting was with these two books, I. I went one day, it said there was this cairn, this this um, place, yeah. Mother Mary energy is coming through this again. There was this cairn that was, was meant to be like appeared overnight. So there's this story about these giants and it was out in a place in County Sligo. And it was it was saying that the people had said overnight, these giants or something landed all of these stones on this cairn and it blocked underneath it was this well. This was meant to be like a um, eternal youth, this, this well, and they covered up this well. So I was like, God, I'd love to see it. So I went to the place where it was, Tomb Cross is the name, this was it. Tomb Cross was the name of the place in Ireland. Okay. Okay, okay. And the place where the grail was meant to be kept in Portugal, and the other book was called Tomb. Okay, so there was something okay. with the name here that was very T U A M T U A M. Yeah. No, T O O M B E was very different, and they were okay. spelled the exact same. And I was like, "There's something here that's very strange." So I went there just to have a feel. The land was no access anymore. You weren't allowed. There were signs up everywhere: "Do not cross this land." So I was just. <laughs> 
tapping in energetically and thinking, oh, my God. Yeah. So then when I went back on the road, I came across there's this place. So out in there's a place in Ballymo called um, there is there's there's caves out there. Um, Gronya and Jermud caves. There's a lot of history there. Um, wow. But there's also in in this book, I was like, okay, I'm going to go out this way. I'm in this part of the the the, the countryside. I went to this place. I I passed this well. There was this um, a little well up a country road, and it's called uh, like a holy well. And I was guided to go there, so I was on my own. Went out. It was a lovely day. Headed off down this little path <laughs> to this little well. It was a tiny little fresh spring in the water, and there was a little statue of um, Mary there. And it was lovely energy. And and I was just guided to just bless the water of the well or receive drink some of the yeah. water of the well. Yeah. And yeah. in my eye line straight ahead in in this spring of the well there was um i could see like old crosses like an old cemetery or an old um something old in the distance okay so i, I went further up the road and i went in and <laughs> it was a place that's very overgrown that is you would miss it in 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 a second and yeah. it's called the valley of the kings wow so I went into this place of the kings, Hello. Yes. Right? Hello. and yeah. what even more interesting was, it was just this, it was an old friary abbey monastery had been built there, it was a tiny little space, but there was this like a, a very flat piece on the ground and there was a broken, it looked like a broken, just it wasn't even a headstone because it would have been predating that, but it was like a, a broken uh, piece of, of, of rock but it was right. kind of trying to put back together again. And right. a symbol on it was the symbol of the Knights Templars. And this is in the middle of nowhere, Lou, in the middle of wow. nowhere, just wow. randomly found it because I was looking for the other place. So I right. went there and I was like, oh my God, this. so I, I, I sat there and I brought through some light language and I brought through some blessing and I was doing a lot of healing at the time with the father wound and the divine masculine. So it's all okay. it all coincides. And I received there, I cannot describe what it was, but this energy came mm. swirling up from beneath the ground where I sat. Yeah. Wow. Up through my spinal column, up through right. me and out. And it right. was just massive. And wow. I felt the energy of these men, like knights, yeah. come in around yeah. me. And wow. it was of the utmost love. And it was, I was being shown, it was the masculine energy in its purest form. Yes. Without any distortion, yeah. without My any masculine. patriarch, without any yeah. oppression, yeah. in its yeah. purest form. And the love, yeah. the reverence, the respect that it was bringing through me was phenomenal. And like another experience, just cried and sobbed and sobbed and cried it was remarkable so there is like if we're if, if we go and search for something within us we will find the breadcrumbs we will find other jewels around us it's, it's just remarkable but i always find anything with the knights templars or they left clues they left ways back to rediscover some knowledge <laughs> that was yeah. You know that they had to underplay it and, and, and hide it down for safety but the, it's still there and there sure. was like that for me was in that area there's all these other caves there's all these other signposts there's all this other activity happening there but for me that was a portal there was immense in a tiny little field with a few sheep running around a little side gate you wouldn't even know it was there <laughs> it's phenomenal right. yeah wow. phenomenal wow. energy yeah, I mean, Mairead, my God, you know, you are just being led by the hand, my friend, uh, to every every sacred spot on the planet. What? And, uh, <laughs> you know, doing, doing your prayer and you're opening up and you're you're getting activated, and then mm -hmm. you know that's another uh, energy that you carry to mm -hmm. to share with uh, with all of us. I mean, the Knights Templar are very dear to me as well, um, you know, and. Um, I mean, do you know uh, this uh, Danish uh, author Lars Mull? Have yes. you heard of him? Okay. Well, I just got his uh, his book from the library here. His wow. first one is here. Yeah. And I interviewed him and his partner uh, Naila uh, yeah. two weeks ago, 
And wow. um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll send that to you if you're, if you're into yeah, this Yeah, absolutely. Fascinating. And, and so I'm just reading the seer. And then yesterday I was in another group and she sent me a PDF of the O manuscript, which I have not read yet. And I heard that is really, uh, you know, the place to start with Lars in terms of his, uh, everyone saying it's not a book, it's an activation, you know, it, wow. it, will, it will change your life. So yeah, all of this is dear to me. His, his teacher, you can see the documentary of this guy on his uh, website. This is Kaye de Montsegur. Wow. Yeah, Montsegur, of course, is where Mary Magdalene uh, made her home for years in, wow. in France as well. And that's part of the Cathar history also. So yeah, mm -hmm. all of this is, uh, you know, that I, Dan Brown and his, his work in the Da Vinci Code brought some of that yeah. to light, you know? And uh, Kate Moss uh, has written novels about uh, some of these these things, which I, I've read one of those as well. So yeah, it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. so, Ariette Love, who now lives in Montsegur from mm -hmm. Netherlands. I'll, I'll mm -hmm. connect the two of you if you like. She's she's another bright light. It's yeah. it's amazing because it's um, for me it's you know it's all part and parcel of our, of of the journey, I guess, and and looking back at, at footsteps as well of where we've come because you know the the time of 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 Yeshua that time and and that that effect that that's had and that knock on effect and we're feeling that energy now we're we're remembering and reconnecting with that energy and how that was protect us and for me I've done so much work with with the divine feminine that my struggle was healing the divine masculine which of course is in us all we have feminine and masculine energies within us but it was I was struggling with healing the masculine wounds from from you know within me and and within my family and sure, this honey. was the knights templars was a way for me to show the masculine energy is deeply loving deeply compassionate deeply kind caring they gave their lives for that um that's what yeah. i received from that you know oh yeah oh yeah absolutely they gave their lives and mm. um you know many people were put to death uh you know at the stake and uh, it was no picnic you know it was really mm -hmm. intense um but yeah, darling, you know, this is uh, this is the return of the light workers. This is yeah. the return of the light. Uh, Miss of Avalon is also another, you know, uh, and and Glastonbury and, uh, you know, uh, Cornwall and all of that. Uh, uh, you know, I, I just spent some time there a few years ago for the first time. And, um, you know, the tour and, you know, the well and all of that. Uh, I'm, I'm still learning about those things. I was there. I didn't even go to all these places yeah. when I was there. You know, I had no idea where what, what, yeah. was, what it was about as I do now. Yeah. But, yeah, it's still lighting up, I think, around the world now. Mm, yeah, it is. It's it's exciting, isn't it, to, you know? It is exciting. It is. <laughs> <laughs> you, mean, you mean that there's hope? Yes, yes. I'd say that's exciting. <laughs> yes. And, you know, to, to bring it full circle, uh, you know, you were saying, um, I mean, Maraid, my heart really goes out to you because, uh, you know, like we're talking, we're, we're chatting before we started recording, we're talking about what it's like to be an empath in the world. Mm -hmm. And you are, you know, you are the empath's empath, my friend. You know, you are the, the head of the class of the empaths as far as I'm concerned. Well, the, yeah, it, it is. It is part and parcel, I guess, of, of the journey we're here. But also um, what I, I love is that it the knowledge is power, really. Yeah. You know, yes. true knowledge is power. Knowledge from the heart yeah. and heart aligned knowledge is power. And when we can begin to have an understanding of why we experience things the way we experience them and yes. learn that, you know, we're unlearning. So, so most of my life I'm, I'm spending is unlearning stuff because there's so much of what we believe about ourselves that is not the truth. Sure. Um, and that's what I think a lot of the shadow work is, is you're actually, you know, sitting down with your own devil, so to speak, your own demon, yeah. so to speak. And oh, yeah. you're beginning to realize that whatever, however that is manifesting in your life is illusion. It's it, yeah. it's not the truth of you, and you're unlearning everything yeah. that you thought to be your truth is not. It's if it's not heart aligned, if it's not aligned with what's best for you, it's a lie. It's illusion. So you know, and I yeah. you know I say I say yeah. to my kids sometimes as well, and I don't know if it's the right way to word it, but 
we do when we're moving through ego when we're moving through any types of problems in our life there there is when we're still attached to storylines that are not aligned with us there's we're we're believing there's a liar in our own heads that we're believing we're believing other people's traumas that they have yeah. projected onto us and we're carrying them um, right. as our own so yeah, you're, yeah. you're you're dismantling you're dissolving you're unknotting everything and you're starting to discover okay actually there's nothing wrong with me i am you know so you're unlearning and unraveling so much but that that does take time that does take devotion that does take practice um yeah. And, you know, the inner child work for me has been very, very challenging. Um, but thankfully, I, I'm in a place where I've made a huge amount of peace with the experiences I've had because I'm learning from a higher perspective. I needed to experience them. Um, so it, it is it, it, it's remarkable uh, when you're reflecting back when you're through a lot of your shadow work. The lesson you've learned but it doesn't mean it's any you know it's the it's the hardest thing that you can do when when you're going through it um yeah and 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 everyone's had to do it in the earthly walk here as we as we know and you know what a blessing to begin to you know tap into these masters you know and beings of light and and enlightened souls and you know uh from other from other realities from other times you know from other dimensions and, and realize that, uh, you know, help is available. Absolutely. It is. It is available. And, you know, I think if, if people are feeling stuck or they're feeling like they're in a very dark place or they're they're not knowing where the light is, it, it's being gentle with yourself. It, it's remembering to I always say moving back into the heart of us, remembering to take a breath, remembering to do whatever you can to step out of the thought process, out of the overwhelm, because uh, the ego can be like a toddler screaming for attention. It can. Oh, yeah put you into knots i call it the hamster on the wheel going over and over and over in your head uh, but if you can become the observer of that just become the observer of all of the noise you'll start to then take a different perspective on it and you'll start to not have the emotional attachment to it because for me i it's like i had this storybook and i had all these experiences which in truth were very very harsh experiences and 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 still to this you know the, the most traumatic experience of my life and to this date was losing my mother at 13 years of age wow. um, and that was you know and That's i cool. always had that in my storybook that this I, i'm always coming back to this but it was my storyline my attachments and everything around it that kept feeding that so I had to Perfect. learn to rewrite it in some way or look at it from a different perspective and look at it. You know, this was meant to happen to me for some reasons. So Perfect. can I make peace with that? Can I learn acceptance around that? Yeah. Uh, and I think, you know, for me, the reason I do and I'm driven to do the work that I do is, you know, the, the mother talking about Mother Mary and, and I love the mother energy. You know, I lost my grandmother at 11 through suicide and I lost my mom at 13. So there's two years there in that, wow. you know, an adolescent life that I complete severed to the mother connection complete that was it right. there was no right. mother role in my life after that so okay. i had to learn what that yeah. was derived sure. from that within me but if i didn't have those experiences in my life i would be on a different path oh, so God, yes. it's making <laughs> peace with what yeah. is yeah. and um not having the the victim for me it was a big victim storyline well if this yeah. didn't happen and this didn't happen then i wouldn't be in this and it's learning responsibility maturity and finding yes. a better way through or a, or a higher purpose for exactly. experiences what, yeah. what is the gift what is the gift what is the gift in this because tragedy yeah. happens to everybody it will come knocking right. on everybody's door yeah. but it's yeah. again our reactions to it and how am i going to move through this with yeah. something learned from it um because you know i i feel like you know what i've learned so much is is the if we can keep our hearts open yes if we can keep our hearts open we can move through anything but when we close down our hearts that's when humanity loses the run of itself that's what's happened to so many you sure. know that's sure. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I relate for me, hun, the thank you for sharing all that. That was that was really, really beautiful and profound and heartfelt. Uh, after the fire I had a few years ago and, and just trying to recover my energy, I, I've gotten back into music, playing and singing yeah. and all that, you know, and that completely lifts me mm. out of that victim consciousness, you know, of poor mm -hmm. me and why is this happening and all that. And that was a gift that mm -hmm. really came out of, you know, I hadn't been playing much for years before then. And uh, it, so, you know, it's the same thing in my current situation, you know, that I have the opportunity to have a chat with you and other people like your good self, my friend, you know, this is a huge blessing for me. So mm -hmm. there's still many, many things that are opening up and building momentum. And, um, you know, there's a lot of light in, in all of that darkness. Mm -hmm. uh, to come back to your message about, you know, uh, as we finish up here, I'll give you give you a chance to, to cool your smoking <laughs> mind over there. Um, you know, the war that you channeled from spirit, the war plans that you were shown from from source, you know, I mean, we all have this inside of all of us. You mm -hmm. know, this is me, this is where I find peace of mind and 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 hope for humanity. And I, you know, you and I know we are going to win this this battle mm -hmm. between the light and the dark on this planet in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. We're going to turn things around. I I I'm, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that's mm -hmm. my knowing. You know, is that yours yeah. as well? Yes, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. So it's, a big, it's a big time on this planet. It is a big time. And I've I've been shown, you know, through, you know, I hold soul readings one-to-one -one with clients. And I've been shown, I've met several teachers um, that have come yeah. to me for guidance because they're a little bit lost in the, the, the academic world and how stoic and outdated it is. And I had one teacher in particular, um, I know her, she's from, if she's from here, but I was shown like her, all her family are teachers, her parents were teachers, her grandparents were teachers. So the teaching was in her bloodline. Right. And she had a son and her son was started school and he was a free spirit, a new child of the earth. And he was not having it in school. Right. So she was at her wit's end because she didn't know what to do because he hated school. It wasn't for him. But she's coming from a full background of academics. And I was shown for her, I got this such a strong visual for her. I was shown this old um, school building, you know, the, the, the stone buildings. And she had a big sledgehammer and she was bashing down the wall and she yeah. was making an opening in, in the school and all the children were running out into this garden and they were playing in the garden and they were discovering plants and insects and animals and nature and part of her sole purpose and there was several others I have read since then is to create a new way for these younger children a new Absolutely. method of teaching Absolutely. so there is already there is things at play mm -hmm. here there is change happening yes. already yes. yes do you know this uh uh centner uh teacher it's center in florida uh, have you heard of this? Do you, did you ever listen to uh, Del Big Tree, no. uh, a program called The High Wire? Well, this was the whole education for me about certain medical uh, mm -hmm. invasive procedures that have been uh, encouraged over the last few years. Oh, and yeah, uh, yeah. he was one of my guides about all that. And um, Louise Sentner, I think, is her name. Anyway, she is an extremely progressive uh, teacher uh, who insisted that all of her staff not take the uh, recommended uh, mm -hmm. medical procedure and uh, a real uh, 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 you know uh, leader and uh, also Jason Shurka have you heard of him okay mm -hmm. so I will have to uh, yeah I'm gonna make a little list here about okay. <laughs> uh, Murray, it'll be a joy but Jason is uh, is extraordinary he's 26 years old and he along with this other amazing uh, woman, her name is Dr. Uh, Sharon Michaels or Dr. Rose Michaels, mm -hmm. Sharon Rose Michaels, something like this, a, a, a raving genius with healing. They've, they've, uh, she's invented with her son something called the EE systems. She was a, a, a world class energetic healer, and he's a computer guy. And together they've got this bank of screen with lights on it and sound, 
and they put it around people, it changes your frequency and people are having miraculous. Wow, it sounds amazing. Miraculous healings, yes. And Jason has helped her to create something like 400 of these centers around the planet in the last two years wow. or so. Never so, heard of that's amazing. Wow. Yeah, so, yeah, so you, you were talking about, sorry, you were talking about um, changing the paradigm yeah. of education for children and how these children are not not having it. They're not sitting oh, there bored. They're not, and they're, they're very high frequency as well, these kids, very high frequency energy. Yeah. They're different. Yeah, yes. Well, my God, I see these women in their 20s uh, online. You know, mostly it's women and mostly they're in their 20s and they are just blazing mm. the truth into uh, people's consciousness yeah. without any hesitation. And I'm like going, whoa, look at this. Here they yeah. come. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's it's, it's remarkable. And, and and that's what we need. That's the only way it's, we're, we're that's how we are shifting out of it. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it Beautiful. is. It's, it's exciting times. It, truly amazing. Incredibly exciting. Yes. Well, my friend, let me let you have some lunch or take a deep breath or, you know, go to the Thank toy you. or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Bless your heart. Thank you. And you, uh, where do people find you to come rushing to your, your gifts and abilities? Yes. Oh, so at the moment you can find me on uh, Facebook or Instagram. You can just send me a message. Um, I was taking okay. a huge step back from my my work, um, but I'm getting back into it again. So you can just send, reach out and send me a message through Marie Gilmartin on uh, my Instagram or Facebook. Um, and I am, I'm, I'm holding some um, sessions through Zoom online one-to-one -one for soul readings at the moment. Um, I am going to be holding some retreats um, coming up shortly as well. I work with uh, Mother Cacao through Ecuador. Um, we maybe talk about that another day and I've experienced, sure. yeah, a lot of um, healing and clearings through Ecuador. Um, yeah, an amazing, amazing country. But um, yeah, for now, you can reach out to me if you're interested in having a one-to-one -one reading or a clearing or healing. Just let me know. I'm sure it is life-changing like this conversation. Oh, yeah. Really <laughs> grateful to you. Really yeah. deeply grateful, Marie. What a joy to know you. And Thank you, Lou. And you. And you, my lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. We'll leave it there. We'll talk soon. Have a brilliant, beautiful day. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Take care. You too.